Hello, welcome back to Heaven Moon. This is Cushion here. Action local cooking management sim game. So we're on day 50. And the game is basically over. We beat the beat the ball. We beat the final boss, mom and dad. It was difficult, but we got it done. So what did we get? What did we get from beating the final boss? We got League of Cushioneer Emblem. We become the champion of League of Cushioneers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. We got one declaration and that's it. Good God. And we didn't really get the, the credit scene or like a ending cutscene or whatnot. We, we, I mean, we got a couple of dialogue, the ending, like, a, yeah, but it didn't really feel like, felt like ending to me, but I looked around the town and there wasn't not not uh nothing else for me to do. No new quests, no new dungeons, nothing. So that's it. I mean I still I still can go back to the cooking arena and the final showdown challenge. So I can challenge the mom and dad again if I want to, but I don't get anything out of it. So there's really no reason for me to do that. So basically that's it for this game. The game is over. It's the end. Oh well. So instead of instead of playing today, I, I'm I'm going to talk about the game in general, and I'm going to go, go through each section. So it's going to take a while. So basically, this game is over for me, but I'm still gonna come back from time to time because I still have eight achievements left to go, <laughs> and I still want to get those done. Um, the one of them, I have to restart from day one to get get that. Because I have to pay debt on the first day I learn them. Because, mm, yeah, we have to restart from day one if I want to do that. So I'm probably going to get that done later. So what else do I need to do uh, for the achievement? I have to buy five items from um, the special shop NPC. I think this is called Porsche or Crochet or something. And I have to buy plants from the plant merchant, Sencha. I have to buy 50 plants. Wow. The plants, uh, the one problem with the plants is that plant doesn't have any buffs on them. So there's really no reason to buy plants unless you really want to decorate your restaurant with the plants, that is. So I have to buy 50 plants. I mean, plants is not that expensive, so I can probably get that done. Buy carpet from Ho-Chan. We have to buy 20. That's easy to do. So, I mean, carpet does have some buff so yeah we can get that done and that's about it so let's talk about the game in general um so this is this upgrade this restaurant is fully upgraded so i can have four personal fridges i can have one two three four five chests i mean that's a lot that's a lot but it's i mean it's probably not it's a kind of bummer that you don't really get to upgrade the chest It'll be really nice if I can actually upgrade a chest. But that's all you can get, uh, storage-wise. And... Okay, this is fully upgraded restaurant. Look at the size. Look at the size of this. It's really big. But you're just not going to use all this space. Uh, you're generally going to use the space around your cashier and your cooking station. So you can have up to 14 cooking stations and 5 fridges. And you can upgrade those. You can upgrade those. Um, so generally speaking, you want to have um, two of each type. Because tier 4 dishes take really long time to cook. So you don't want that to get backed up. So you want to have at least two each. But there are, um, there are some interesting builds you can do by just having one type. Of cooking utensil. I think you can do that. That's going to force the customer to order the dishes, order just some particular dishes. I think you can force a customer to order the dishes that you want them to order. Hmm. I I, I think I have to look into the journal and recipe and try. I think there's some strategy you can do. But it's too late for me now. <laughs> it's too late for me now. But I think there's some strategy that you can you can do by just placing 
one type of cooking station to force the customer to order certain type of dishes only. That way, you can just you can you just need to get those ingredient. Hmm, that's something I can look into later. But uh, it's probably over for me. It's not a whole lot for me to. And let's talk about the cashier and with the restaurant in general. Uh, so restaurant, you the problem is you can't move this. You cannot move the cashier. It's fixed in this one spot. So once customer try to pay you, you have to go back and collect the money. And this not. I was really hoping to get more upgrade option for the restaurant, but this is it. So you cannot automate the cooking process. You cannot automate the cashier, and you have to grab the dishes and deliver the dishes to the noble and greater noble customer. So you ha basically have to do everything by yourself. <laughs> Oh, it can be really frustrating and it can be really annoying to do that when once you get the novel customer. That where the <laughs> that's where the fun begins, I guess. <laughs> and the table wise, you can't really I mean, if you want to be efficient, you you want to place it like this, right? The problem is if you do it like this, too close, it's just that. The, the, the customer is going to have some past issues because they're going to bump into each other if, if you make it too narrow. And it's, the customer will try to get to the cashier, you know, to to pay. But if you have it just way too narrow, they're going to bump into each other. They just don't, they're just not going to have, um, they, they're just, just not as smart enough to figure out the way by themselves. It's just, they're just going to get stuck along the way. They will try to go this way, then just got to try to go back this way. <laughs> so it's it's going to delay your progress with the customer. So you definitely want to have some extra spaces between them, at least two, so they can move around more easily. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. You you will you will see the customer who will try to walk this way. Then once this customer comes out this way, to block his block his way. He will try to get around it. But then once this customer gets out of the way, then he's gonna go this way. Then gonna come back to it, and there can be really annoying when when you try to collect the money. Like oh, this customer is coming back. I'm I'm trying to rush back here to collect the money, but this guy stuck here. Go back here, back here, down there again. It's like. Okay, when are you gonna, when when are you gonna come to the cashier? I need to collect the money. I need to go back and cook. <laughs> so that can be really annoying. So watch out for that. And the decoration really doesn't do a whole lot for you. I mean, uh, if you just want a certain type of customer, you can have those decoration just focused on that type of customer. But it's kind of hard to do that because you need lots of materials. Money and whatnot, you know, to get, you know, to get enough um, decoration in the restaurant. So let's talk about the customer while we're at it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of customer. We have child, elderly, greater noble, noble, soldier, tourist, townsfolk. So each customer has a different, um, different um, system, I guess, uh, attribute to it. So, child, full of energy, they enjoy food greatly, but also have very low patience, so don't keep them waiting for their food too long. So, child customer eats fast, move fast, order fast, they're just fast at everything they do. It's really good customer for the early game, but not that good for the late game, because the child doesn't really order expensive dishes. They order um, tier 1, tier 2 dishes most of the time, so they are really good at the early game, but not that good uh, late game. So elderly customer is just opposite of the child customer. So elderly customer takes their time, which means they work slow, they move slow, they walk slow, they, they order slowly, they eat slowly. And it's, it can be really pain when you try to close the restaurant. Sometimes, so because you want to leave for the dungeon, right? Then, like, I, I'm like, oh, uh, let's close the restaurant. I can, I, I can leave if I leave. I, if I can leave for the dungeon, if I close the restaurant right now. But if you have like a couple of elderly customer, you can't really get out of the restaurant until they pay, right? And since they, 
it's slow, moves slow. Sometimes you just can't close the restaurant fast enough to leave for the dungeons. So that can be really annoying to deal with sometimes, but most of the time it's okay. It's, it's the closing time is when the elderly customer matters. They do order expensive dishes sometimes, but they don't really um, order tier 4 dishes. No. So let's talk about the, the other ones first because Noble and Greater Noble is going to... We, we, are, we are going to unlock them later stages of the game. So Soldier. So not that, not that much about the Soldier, right? So they eat food quickly, but that's about it. They move um, at normal speed. Nothing special about Soldier. They just eat food quickly and that's it. I don't really see any particular um, trait from the Soldier just yet. Tourist, um, you, you kind of want the tourist in the early game as well as the late game because they order expensive dishes. They do order expensive dishes. They sometimes they do order tier four dishes as well. So tourist is actually a pretty good customer. They are they mm, they are kind of slow, but that, they're not really that slow compared to the elderly. So I think. I think Tourist is really good type of customer for the early game as well as the late game. The only downside of the Tourist is that sometimes they will try to eat and dash. So I've been playing this game for a long time. I um the cut does there are some customers who will try to eat and dash, so you have to watch out for that. But so far I have only seen the Tourist eat and dash. No other customer try to eat and dash, only the tourist. So I think, unless it's a bug, I think the tourist is the only type of the customer who will try to eat and dash. So you have to watch out for these two. But otherwise, this customer is really good because they do all the expensive dishes, they grab dishes by themselves. So you don't really need to worry about serving the dishes. So really good. So townsfolk is basically just your general type of customer. Nothing special, nothing bad about them. Um, yeah, not much to talk about the townsfolk really. Just a basic customer. So once you upgrade your restaurant reputation level a lot, and when also once you upgrade the restaurant level a lot, you're gonna start get the noble and the greater noble customer. They are basically just late game customer, right? But the difference is that the noble customer is not going to grab the dishes from the counter. You have to deliver the dishes to them. And also the noble customer is going to order expensive dishes most of the time. So they are pretty good customer if you want to get lots of money, but they are kind of annoying because you have to deliver the dishes to themselves. So they're not going to grab the dishes from the counter. You, the another thing you have to watch out for, if you grab the wrong, if you deliver the wrong dish, they are still gonna eat that dish. And they's just they're still not gonna pay for that. So, so once you deliver the wrong dishes, it's, it's, it's gonna be really chaotic in the restaurant. So you have to watch out. You really have to watch out which dishes you deliver to the noble. You have to deliver the right dishes. So greater noble is basically the upgrade version of the noble. So they are going to order expensive dishes, that's for sure. Yeah, most of the time, if you can cook those dishes, they're going to order tier 4 dishes. Most of, most of the time. But sometimes they will order tier 3 dishes, but they're still going to order expensive dishes. So they are really good um, for earning, the, earning gold. And the, different, the difference between Noble and Greater Noble is that the Greater Noble is going to eat twice. So they're going to order twice. So the first dish they order, you deliver them, they're gonna eat it, and they're gonna wait a few seconds, they gonna take they're gonna order the second dishes, then you have to cook the dishes and deliver the second dishes again, then they're gonna pay. So basically there's like a two customer in one. Sounds good, right? Sounds good, right? The only downside is, of course you have to deliver the dishes. One, another downside is that when it comes to closing time, you don't want to get the greater noble because since they have to eat two dishes, they're not going to pay for the first dishes. For example, 
uh, let's say the, the great noble came into the restaurant and they ordered the rice. And then he finished eating the rice, but it came to, um, it's, it's closing time now, so I can't really cook the second dishes, right? So my restaurant is closed. They, he still eat the rice dishes. So he, I mean, you might think that he's going to pay for the first dishes, right? No, he's just gonna leave. So you definitely don't want the greater noble. You don't want to serve the greater noble when it comes to, down to the closing time. Because if they eat the first dishes and if they fail to eat the second dishes, they're not going to pay for the first dishes. So you have to watch out for that. But otherwise, this customer is really good for making lots of money. But it's kind of annoying to deal with them. Yeah. I really wish we have like a different upgrade for the restaurant to automate the cashier at least. Or just help out with the delivery of the dishes to the noble customer with that. Or maybe automate some process um, process here. That would be really nice too. But alas, this is the last upgrade. So, oh well. Oh well. Okay, now let's talk about the bubble tea. So, at the bubble tea shop, you can, up, up buy, you can, you can buy or upgrade your bubble tea. So you have eight different types of bubble tea. Bubble tea is basically a potion, healing potion you can use in the dungeon. So you have eight different types of bubble tea. But the thing is, you just gotta use these two. The other six types of bubble tea is generally just useless. No. So because the main use for the bubble tea is to heal you. It's for the healing purpose, right? It's just that these other six doesn't heal you that much. It only heals you 10 HP. It, is, uh, it heals you 3 HP for a second, but it only lasts for four seconds. So if you even if you stay within the range for for full healing, it's gonna heal you only 12. It's just not good enough. The healing is just not good enough for these other six. I'm sure they have different effects and whatnot, but this effect is not that strong either. So <sighs> If the developer really wanted the people to use this other bubble tea, they really have to buff this. The, the other effect is not that strong. The healing is just too low. So there's really no reason for you to upgrade these other, other six and use them at all. In my personal opinion, you just want to upgrade the fresh milk tea and cheese milk tea and that's it. Just, just stick to this dude. Don't upgrade this. Just, no reason for you to upgrade it unless the un unless they patch it and buff this. There's just no reason for you to use it. So that's kind of bummer. Even though you have like eight different type of bubble tea, you're just not gonna use them. You you just gonna stick with these two. So that's kind of unfortunate. But it was really um cool to see the different type of bubble tea. Yeah. So that's about it. Um, so Maud, uh, he's on holiday. So he's here. Uh, so with the brew system, yeah, with the brew system, you can change the mod on your gear, right? <sighs> they still haven't patched it. So I already talked about this before, but let me talk about your game. In order to change the mod, you have to go to this NPC and then you have to ch you have to place your gear and you you can put certain type of dishes to get the mod that you you want but it, it's still random it is still random and then once you get the mod you like you click the brew and it's gonna take a day to get um to change the mod on the gear i really wish they change it so we can get um the mod if i wish they change it so we can change the mod instantly rather than waiting for a day because think about this think about this uh, even though they have different like a uh, lot of interesting mods you generally speaking most of the mod is kind of not that useful in my opinion so the, i think the dash can be really fun the dash mod if you can get like a dash build going can be really fun to use but there are some mods that you definitely want it's the umami and shielding dash. Those two you definitely want to get because there are lots of ranged enemy in this game. 
And also the mod is just that I wish we can select the mod we, we want to change because even though it's random, you can just restart from the day, restart the day, and you just restart the day and you just restart and change the mod on, until you get the mod you like. So the randomness of the mod doesn't really do anything. So I wish they changed it so we can change the mod instantly. Also, we can actually choose the mod that we want. <laughs> that would be really good change. I mean, there's a lot of really cool build that you can do, but it's so easy to set this up. It's so, it's uh, not easy, it's so hard to set this up. So hard to set this up. <sighs> because I haven't really found tier 3 mod on the gear from the shop or drop. Not yet. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if I'm just not sure if, if, if you can find tier 3 mod from the shop or gear, uh, from the from the drop. I haven't found one yet. I haven't found one yet. So even though there's like cool, even though there is like a different, like a cool mod setup you can do, it takes so long time and really hard to find the right mod on the right gear. So yeah, I wish they change it. So we can have, so people can have some more fun with the mod. Ah oh well. And let's talk about the gear here. Um, the blacksmith upgrade system. So you know to upgrade your gear, you have to go to the blacksmith and you have to click on the gear and you have to pay gold and the materials to upgrade. And once you click OK, it's, once you click OK, I have to wait for a day to get this back. And you can only upgrade one gear at a time. And oh yeah, also mod, for the mod, you can also change the one mod at a time. So with that in mind, the problem is, the problem is, in order to upgrade your gear to the maximum level, it's gonna take four days to up upgrade the one gear to the maximum level. That means if you want to have like different set of gears, all fully upgraded, and change the mod on every gear, it's gonna take so sixteen days to upgrade all your gear, and then four days to change the mod on one set. So. In order to get different set of gear, fully upgraded, with the most change, it's gonna take 20 days. And actually it's gonna take longer because sometimes the NPC doesn't work on those days. Uh, for example, Salty Day, the Black Service doesn't work, so you can't really get the gear back. Um, with the Bitter Days, the, the, mod, the Brew doesn't work, so... It's actually gonna take longer than 20 days most, most of the time. So... If, if you take those into account, it's probably gonna take like 22 or 24 days in order to fully upgrade your full set of the gear and change the mod on the full set of gear. So it's really hard to have different set of weapons and different set of gears fully upgraded. The mod changed. It's really hard to do that. Yeah, so I, I think I wanted to change it so we can get the gears back instantly so i want i want the upgrade and the mods to happen instantly so we can get the mod and the upgrade back as soon as we upgrade them and also the amount of materials you need for the upgrade is just ridiculous the money you need for the upgrade is a lot too but boy you need a lot of different material i mean that's kind of encouraging player to go into different dungeons to uh, to upgrade the gear, I get it, but it, I think the amount is just way too much. If you think about it, like you have to upgrade four at least four um gear, and you have to upgrade it sixteen times. You need lots of materials. You need lots of materials. So I I kind of want them to tone down the amount you need to upgrade your gear. I think the amount of material you need for the gear is just way too much, just way too much. 
And yeah, I think that's my take on the upgrade system. And also another thing is that da the damage upgrade and the health upgrade, I think it's just way too low. Yeah, I think they really need to buff the upgrade a bit. And so we we can get just just a bit more damage. It's just not good enough. Look at this 10 attack. I upgrade this to full. You get like plus one damage for upgrade. <laughs> it's just not good enough. I mean, you get like plus five health for upgrade on the glove and boots. I don't think it's that good enough too. You def you really, we really need to get like a better value for the upgrade. Yeah, I think that's my take on the upgrade. So yeah. So let's talk about the furniture. I think I already talked about this a bit as well. So you can upgrade your restaurant to level 15. It takes it only takes wood, basic wood and basic stone and some money. It does cost quite a lot of material though. So I kind of wanted to turn down on the amount you need uh, for the upgrade your restaurant as well. It's just way too much. I I've been running I've been running out of wood and stone a lot. <laughs> So I had to go back to the dungeon just to get the wood and stone. But now this upgraded to full, I don't really that need that many materials. Except that uh, except that the carpenter shop, in order to buy the furniture, right? You have to pay gold. Okay, that's fine. The thing is, you also need to get the materials. Why? <laughs> Why though? It's just that you need so many. I mean, if you want to if you want to decorate your restaurant, you really need to go uh, back to the dungeon a lot. It just to just to grind the materials, right? Look at this. You need like one window, like that's one window. Forty wood, twenty stone, twenty five hardwood, twenty five petrified wood. Just for one decoration, you need like four stack of items. Four. I think it's just way too much. I know. I know this encourages players to go into the different dungeon and to the to the grinding and whatnot. But I think it's just way too much in general. Just way too much. I mean, it's pretty interesting that uh, to have like a different set of decoration and they have different buff. Yeah, but most of the time it doesn't really matter, really. Uh, I I mean I mean I mean I can finally focus on decorating my restaurant now. The game is basically over, but before that, it's really hard to focus on decorating your restaurant until the game is basically over. <laughs> yeah, because you have to pay for the entrance fee, you have to pay the debt, you have to upgrade the restaurant, you have to upgrade the gear, you have to upgrade your bubble tea. There's so much for you to do. There's so much for there's so much materials you need, with ingredients for upgrading all different types of things. You so you really can't focus on decorating your restaurant until it is just too late, basically. And let's talk about the NPC a bit. Um, so, so townsfolk, you have different NPCs. So you basically just gonna deal with most of the time with the bubble tea shop and carpenter and blacksmith and mod. You probably just gonna deal with this. Um, five NPC most of the time, and probably not gonna not gonna care much about the other NPC because, beside from giving, beside from the quest, you just don't have any interaction with the NPC. But they do have their own story going, um, with the progress. So, so with the Chanterelle, she has a relationship with this NPC deal. So. So in the early game, Chantorelli is afraid to talk about their relationship, her relationship with the deal to the Rosemary. But now she actually confessed that she, she's in relationship with the deal to the rest, Rosemary. So, so if you talk to the NPC each day and once you progress with the game, they have a different dialogue. So it's pretty interesting. They have their own stories behind them once you progress with the game. So that's kind of interesting, but you're just not gonna have find enough time to talk to each NPC every day, because you have to run the restaurant, you have to go to the dungeon and whatnot. But it is another interesting thing that you can do, look into when when you are playing this game. And another one thing 
one other minor thing is that you have an NPC's birthday, right? So on 18th, it's the elder's birthday. So on the birthday, the NPC is going to give you the present. So you don't really have to prepare any present for the NPC. So on the NPC's birthday, they're going to have a different dialogue, and that's about it. It's, yeah, I was I was kind of hoping they will have like a relation, some sort of like relationship system that we can like actually give presents to the NPC on their birthday, and you know maybe they will have like a different different set of quests and whatnot. But this game doesn't have that, so NPC's birthday doesn't mean anything. Just you get a present, and they have a different dialogue on that day, and that's it. Um, the other NPC will have a different dialogue as well. So, so like if I talk to Biscotti on Elder's birthday, she will say something about Elder's birthday, like present when what, what that. So that's about it for the NPC's birthday. Uh, I was hoping to have more than that, but oh well, oh well. So in overall, this game is cute, kind of fun. But it is kind of grindy. You have to go back to the same dungeon a lot. <laughs> so if you don't really like to do that, this probably is not the game for you. But it is kind of cute. It's kind of cute. Uh, it's kind of fun to manage the restaurant in the early game. But the late game is kind of just become a, just a bit of hassle. Just grind with the noble and whatnot. Uh, oh, it would be really cool if they add more upgrade to the restaurant, and if they change um, the the system with the mod and upgrade, so we can actually the player can actually experience different different mod and play around with the different mod and different setup, different weapon and whatnot. Yeah, it would be really nice if they do that. Yeah, my my restaurant is fully upgraded, so I have second floor and the third floor. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, I can't go up there. I can only use the first floor. Man. Man, but it would be really cool if, I, if we can actually access, if we have a, like a access to the second floor and third floor. But alas, we only have access to the first floor. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Um. Probably gonna keep playing. Just a just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Just to get the achievement done, but then I'm probably not gonna play too much because until it, until they patch the game. If they add more content, yeah, then I will play more. But until they do that, I'm probably just gonna play a couple more days to get the achievement and then that's about it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the questionnaire. I definitely did. I really want to. I would just. I really wanted this game to improve up more. It is really cute. It's really fun game. Don't get me wrong. It's just that it's really grind. It's kind of grindy heavy, and there's a couple of systems I really wanted to change. But if they do that, they really could. They really could make this game more fun to play. Ah, uh, well. Well, I think that's enough babbling for me. In, in, enough talking. Um, so, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you guys on... Uh, mm, I don't know. I'll, I will play a bit more, but... For not, not today. Not today. Uh, I, I gotta go, so... Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Bye.